Okay, so we're told a zoologist is studying a certain breed of dog. He knows from past experience that the probability of a newly born puppy being female is 0.55. He selects a random sample of 20 newborn puppies and we want to calculate the probability that the number of females in the sample is A, exactly 12 and B, between 8 and 16, both inclusive. Okay, so what we're talking about here is a binomial distribution because these puppies can either be male or female, so it's a one out of two choice. Okay, so we're going to start off this question, first of all, as we do with any distribution question for Poisson or binomial, by defining the distributions. So we're going to let x equal the number of females. And we need to state this, and then we need to state that x is distributed binomially with a sample number of 20 and a probability of success being 0 0.55. Okay, so A part I says, find out the probability that there are exactly 12 females. Well, personally, I like to use the formula for the binomial when we use exact figures rather than taking two readings from the, from the table. This means that we are going to do 20, choose 12, so this will account for all the different combinations, different amounts, ways we can pick 12 females from a group of 20, multiplied by the probability of a female being born to the power of 12, because there will be 12 females, multiplied by the probability of a male being born to the power of 8, because there would have to be 8 males. We can then put this into our calculator carefully and calculate in one go that the probability of there being exactly 12 females is 0.162, exactly to three decimal places. Okay, so let's have a quick look. Where can I get marks on this question? Well, first of all, we get a mark statement mark for stating our binomial distribution correctly. We then get a method mark for showing how we've used the binomial formula in this line here, and then we can have an accuracy mark or answer mark for this answer here stated with the rounding being three decimal places. Okay, so Let's have a look at part II. Part II is a little bit more complicated because we have to do, do find the probability that uh, the number of females is from 8 up to 16. The difficulty with this is that the probability of a success is 0.55. So we know that the binomial tables only go up to 0.5. So we're going to have to use a reverse prob a probability distribution here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let y be the number of males. Okay, and in order to calculate this, this will be 20 minus x, which is the number of females. This means that the number of males is distributed binomially with a sample, so y there, sorry, with a sample of 20 still, so that sample size doesn't stay change, but then 1 minus the probability of the female, which is 1 minus 0.55, so the probability of a male being born is 0.45. Okay, so we state the distribution for the males. So what we're going to do in effect is actually work out the probability of getting the right number of males so that the females lies between 8 and 16. Now what we do is we can state that probability 8 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 16 is actually equal to well the lower bound for the males would come from the upper bound for the females so we're going to do 20 minus 16 less than y and again in reverse so everything about the male distribution is in reverse the upper bound for the males will come from the lower bound for the females so 20 minus 8 so we're looking to find the probability that the number of males lies between 4 and 12. 
Now, in order to use the tables to calculate this, this means I'm going to find the probability that y is less than or equal to 12. And because I actually want to go include 4 in the range for the males, that means I'm going to have to take away the probability that x is, sorry, not x, y of course, y is less than or equal to 3. So 1 less than the 4. And that's because I want to go up to the 4, but not include the 4, because the 4 needs to be included in the range of the probabilities uh, of success here. So, at this point, we'll go and read our tables. We are looking to find a reading from our binomial tables at y is less than or equal to 12, and at y is less than or equal to 3. So, here's n equals 20, and the probability that we're working with is n equals 0.45, so this last column. When you're working so close to the edge, it's not so important, I suppose, to do the methods that I use, but I try to be consistent when I'm working to avoid silly mistakes. So, what I'm going to do is just use a red pen to quickly highlight the column I'm working on. So, 0.45 is this column here. I'm just going to draw a little red line to the right of it, just to show where we're reading up to. So, that is where we're reading up to, we're reading up to this column here. Now you don't have to draw anything on your tables because obviously your tables come use, unusable after a little while. Just use a ruler or a piece of paper just to rule it, just to make sure that you know you're going up to and you know every time that it's just that last column that you're working with. So looking at the probability y is less than or equal to 12, I'll just go to 12 and then again what I'm going to do is just draw a red line across. It's going to be a little bit wobbly but hopefully you get the idea. So all the way across so that we can see that the reading that we should be taking is that the probability of y less than or equal to 12 is 0 0.9420. And of course, again, use a ruler or a piece of paper just to rule it underneath it. So you know when you've put that paper on the right-hand side or and that paper underneath, that it's that value in the bottom right corner. So probability y is less than or equal to 12 is 0 0.9420. I'm going to do exactly the same for the probability y is less than or equal to 3. So just coming across from 3, using that red line to try and draw as straight as possible to highlight what we're doing. Of course, you'll be using a piece of paper to just rule that. So then if I just highlight the reading that we're taking, so it's 0 0.0049. So we can now subtract 0 0.0049 from 0 0.9420. Having read my tables, I found that the probability y is less than or equal to 12 is 0.9420. And then we're going to take away probability that y is less than or equal to 3, which is 0.049. And so we get an answer of 0.9371. It's worth just stating, potentially, at the end, what it is you found. So just going back to the original question, and stating the probability that the number of females is between 8 and 16 is 0.9371. Okay, so how do we get marks on this question? Well, first of all, we get a method mark for reversing the distribution here. Second of all, as soon as we've stated that the probability of the females is equal to this range for the probability of males. We get an accuracy mark because it has to be an accurate representation, this exact uh, range for this bit here. We then get an accuracy mark for the correct readings from the table. So we get one accuracy mark for each one of these readings and then finally we get an accuracy mark for our final answer. Okay, so let's have a look at question B. Question B says the probability of a newly born puppy being yellow is 0.05. Use an approximation, approximating distribution to find the probability that less of five out of a random sample simply a sample of 60 newly born puppies are yellow. Okay, so the approximating distribution would be the Poisson. The Poisson, uh, so let's do, um, let's use 
u be the number of yellow puppies. So again we should write out the distribution first of all. Okay, so that means u is distributed binomially with a sample of 60 and a probability of it being yellow 0 0.05. Now this means I can use, I can approximate this to the Poisson, so u is approximated to the Poisson. This can only happen when n is 50 or larger and the probability is sufficiently small. It's going to be 60, so n times p, so this gives us the mean amount of yellow puppies per sample of 60. So what we actually get is u is distributed with Poisson distribution mean 3. So that means, or mean and variance 3. So that means in a sample of 60, we'd on average have three yellow puppies with a variance of 3. So what we're looking to do is we are looking to solve the probability that the number of yellow puppies is less than 5. Well, the tables go from less than or equals to. So actually what we're doing here is we're doing the probability that u is less than or equal to 4. So we're going up all the way up to and including 4. u can be, but it can't be up to 5. Okay, so then let's read our tables. Okay, so from our table we are looking to read of a probability of u less than or equal to 4 when we have a mean of 3. So first of all, looking along the means, so there's our lambda, looking at the means, it's up to 1.8 here. So here we are looking at this column here, so this is where mean is 3. And I mean, I would use a ruler in real life, but just to illustrate what we're doing, is I just use it to the right hand side of it to eliminate going past it. Okay, so now I know what I'm doing is I'm focusing on this column here. I want the probability that u is less than or equal to 4. So again, I'd use something, a ruler or a piece of paper. Of course, you mean you can take your finger across, but it can lead to small errors. So apologies for the wobbly line. But this is how I would kind of rule it off with either a couple of pieces of paper or something, just so that I know I'm not making any silly mistakes. And here you can say, see, the reading that I take is 0 0.5. 8153. Having read our tables, we can see we get a probability of 0 0.8153. Okay, so how do we get our marks in this question? Well, first of all, we get a method mark for actually this whole kind of stating of our distribution. So we need to show that it comes for this whole bit here that is distributed binomially and this bit here. So this is the result. So this is my work in here. What we want to show is that when it's u is distributed binomially 60 with n equals 60 and p equals 0 0.5, this can be approximated by u being distributed with Poisson mean 3. Okay, so if you've done that, in that case, what you're going to get is a method mark for, and an accuracy mark for actually working out and doing this entire statement here. So this is worth one method mark and one accuracy mark. Okay, I hope that all made sense.